This being the Will Clayton Church of Christ. This is October 6, 2019. This is our AM message. And it is part two. Part two to will God respond to worship done correctly by the unsaved? Will God, that's the question, respond to worship done correctly? That's the key. By the unsaved. If you didn't get last week's evening message also, it will be of some benefit uh, concerning what we're going to talk about uh, uh, this morning and continuation. Just a different angle of which we can look at. One thing I want to encourage you to do, saints of God, is to understand what it is you and I have to accomplish in our walk. We cannot uh, recreate Christianity and we cannot misunderstand Christianity, cannot twist it uh, to make it what we would like. Uh, and if we do that, we will have swift destruction brought on us. And one of the things is God's Son forewarns us in how we ought to approach each and every subject, and He forewarns us the ramifications if we do not adhere to what the Lord has said. One thing about yeast, brethren, I want to encourage you to know yeast deals with a thought of when you're cooking, leaven it's called in the Bible, it's easy to grab the wrong item. During the Passover, and look in the Old Testament, they were forewarned, don't have any leaven or yeast in your cabinets. One of the reasons was God was not going to forgive you for accidentally putting yeast in your bread that you were going to make. The Passover meal was not eaten in the temple by the saints of God. The saints of God ate the Passover meal in their homes. They were trusted that they would eat it. And I think sometimes we think that man was the, some type of a watchdog police to make sure saints did things. See, God is in control. God trusts the saints. And God monitored and he punished the saints if they don't do right. He also punishes the wicked for not doing right. But he blesses the saints if they do right. And he blesses the wicked when they become a child of God. So you cannot say that God does not bless people for doing a thing right. Regardless of their Christian. If they do a thing right, God blesses them. See, when, when we say that, that means there's a gap in our learning. Either haven't studied or haven't accepted. And so, God had such a hate for the mistake that he said... You would have to literally, you bake, or you bake the bread at the gathering for the family. You would have to literally, during Passover week when it would start, take the items and throw them in the garbage. All of your yeast. And cast it out of your home and say, get out your house. So when you start to make bread, you don't accidentally reach for the yeast to put inside the mixture. Because he was not going to forgive you. You would have been part of then you would have been bringing a sin offering. You know, in addition to enjoying the festivities, because you'd have to come late and bring a sin. Oh man, I didn't realize I got yeast that it's unacceptable. And brethren, what you and I have to understand, error is unacceptable in the church. It doesn't matter if we're too busy to study. It doesn't matter if it's an honest mistake. It's still unacceptable. And certain subjects, it can cost you your salvation, if not remedied. And so, therefore, one of the things we want to look at is information that is not correct. Taught by religious holy leaders is still unacceptable. Let's look at, if you will, Matthew chapter um, number 16. We're going to show some points here. You know, brethren, one of the things is if it's not damnation to be wrong, it's damnation to not accept when we have erred. And anytime you're teaching, people are going to think like the disciples. Is it I? Is it I? I mean, you know, but the thing is, just listen to the message. And then when it comes to, is it you? You know, okay, well, here, God already gave message. Because, brethren, it's not going to change. I'm telling you to think about the truth, brethren. It doesn't change for any of us. Amen. I mean, you're talking about the guy who brought the law. We're not accepting. Without Moses, there is no law brought in. 
It's literally called Moses' law. Amen. That's what it's called. When Jesus speaks, he says, Moses told you. That's the power of the man. And God uses that vessel to bring in. And when Aaron and Miriam began to speak against him, thinking he is nothing, knowing that God does work with them, but they don't understand. He is greater than them. Because God gave him something greater to do. Not the man himself. And they were thinking, well, the man himself thinks he's great enough. And God said, that's why God called him to the middle of the camp. said, I chose him. And what God is telling them, I made him what he is. And so he said, you're talking about me. Because I chose him. I made him great like that. And who are you to judge him? Aaron is judged with Moses at one time. And Moses Tells the people, he says, and what did Aaron do to you? He's only doing what I tell him to do. The instructions I give him to do. So why do you hate him? That's the same thing God was saying about Moses. So Miriam realizing a distinction is shown being a female, she shouldn't have even opened her mouth in that manner against Moses. She turns a leper. Aaron doesn't become a leper. Look at the distinction and punishment. Aaron's God's high priest. Here's the beginning of all the priests. He is used to bring in the priesthood. Without Aaron, that is no priesthood. It's Aaronic priesthood. We say it because it's of Aaron. You have to be his blood son. Not ancestry. You have to be involved with his blood. So we have to stop and understand. Why do you think the problem? Because God is sending a message. This is my business. And don't get involved with it. Just do what I'm asked. That's all he's saying. And this is where we begin to reason with our personal lives. Starting to judge the word of God because it contradicts our personal life. It contradicts our worship life. It contradicts our teaching about worship. It contradicts the way we think. And people can get indignant, but the anger is not at the man, it's at God. Because once scriptures are read, they are law. They are final. They either bring damnation or they bring exaltation into life everlasting. So if you look at uh, Matthew 16... Let's look at verse 6. Uh, let's go up to verse 1. I want you to see his anger in these groups. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, tempting him, desired he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said to them, When it is evening, listen at this, saints. You say, It will be fair weather for the sky is red. That's the only inclination. Red sky, evening, it's going to be pretty fair weather. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red. In addition, it's lower. Same color sky. Difference is it's morning and it's low. So he says, okay, it's going to be bad weather. Without any meteorologist involved. Oh, you hypocrites. So now he says you're pretenders, you're actors. You're fake. And why does he say that? You can discern the face of the sky. But you cannot discern the sign of time. Now you have to stop and say, okay, now, now. Jesus is bringing some extremely deep information into the system of God's people. First, and to the world, which is already struggling with what God has already told them through Judaism. So why is he so comfortable about it? Because he knows only a wicked person would fight this. Wicked doesn't mean you've always been wicked. Going to stay with just you're wicked now. See, God doesn't look at a thing like you and I. He'll look at a thing and say, this person is wicked. I'm going to destroy him. And, and we look at, boy, that doesn't seem that deep. This person does something horrific and he goes, I forgive you. That's because he's God. See, you don't get to do that. I don't get to change that. What keeps you out of heaven is fighting that. Because the man himself... Be male, female can become indignant and angered at God, indignant, and began to face God to the face and say, Hey man, I'm equal like you. I'm, I'm, I'm made by you, you made me God. So that's what he tries to do. That's what Nimrod tries to do. And if you don't know these, then we can't really help you a lot because you got to go back and do some more study. Just know who Nimrod is and who Eve is. Not look it up. Because in the time and space we have to teach, brethren, Christ has. A little over three and a half some odd years or more. And he says stuff that causes you to go to heaven and hell. And he leaves. Why is he so confident? Because he says, I know you know what I'm talking about. You know you need to get baptized. 
You don't need to change your ways. You don't need to stop teaching false doctrine. He says, so you're a pretender. See, in our mind, we think, oh man, all the things he made, not one of them together or individually is greater than the soul of man. Yeah, but he still puts the soul in there because he's saying, don't tell me what to do. That's what God is saying. I've told you what to do. I told you in your language. Do that and that's it. And anybody that tells you it's okay after you've aired, they're lost too. It's a very simple process. The problem is, man thinks by resistance he's going to cause the process to be altered. Mm -mm. See, because God doesn't love us like that. He told us how he loves us. He told us our value is less than nothing. But he says, because I'm great, I love you. I am it because I know what your value is. That's what he's saying. But at the same time, he's saying, now listen to what I'm saying. Like that's the worst thing that happened to you. Physical things are repaired, but he says the worst thing told the man in the temple. The man wasn't doing anything wrong. He just said, just be, be faithful now because the worst thing can happen. Damnation. See, the e creation of eternal damnation is a torture that none can bear. Amen. It's beyond comprehension physically. It's the opposite of heaven, which no man can comprehend till he understands by getting there. So you have to understand, you've got to mend your ways. So you've got to value each day what you're going to say, what you're going to do. And this could cause me to wait. I can tell him, I'm sorry later. It doesn't work like that either. And so therefore, when you look at this, he says, How can you tell the sky and think, I don't know that you know what I'm talking about? See, because he knows. The only reason that you can tell the sky is because you've seen it. You see, every time it lowers like this, man, and it's red in this morning, man, it'd be bad weather. So he says, I know you've been looking at the word to this point. You heard my voice. So what you're saying is what I'm saying as Christ is not going to happen. But you believe in that sky. He says that's because you're a hypocrite. You're a pretender on the religious issues. And that's what's wrong with the man. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Listen at them. And thou shalt no sign be given unto thee, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Now they're supposed to know that. Was well, a sign of Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now in the other writing he explains them as he was in the fish for three days. It doesn't matter if anybody believes that. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, how can that be said? He was in the fish three days, man. You want to continue the conversation? Because if not, I'm going to do like Jesus. Like I said, I'm going to depart. I see. You can't get it. That's nobody's fault but your own. And so what he says here is that he's going to be in the heart of the earth three days. <laughs> That's a sign you get. Did you see that sign? I didn't see it. So that means when we read it, the sign is believable. So when you talk to people who don't accept it, you say, well, you're just not a believer. I'll help you. You need your tie change. I'll help you. You need a sandwich. I'll give it to you. But you're not a believer. Why you can say I'm going to die alone? Because you're not a believer. It's just that simple. And it's for the saint and the sinner. The problem is you frustrate your walk. Because you're trying to make people accept it. Just be glad the Lord said that your name is in the book. Not that you can cast out demons. Not that you can throw out thoughts out of your mind. Say, mm -mm. Be glad your name in the book. He said because that's something you can't keep in now. See you can't keep your name in the book. You can cast out a demon with his power and still die lost. You know why? Because he's saying you got to keep your name in the book by doing what I told you to do. Amen. See, that's what that's, that, that, that's some, sometimes that's simple. Obedience and thinking has nothing to do with any activity, no casting out, no nothing. Just believe and accept. And see, some of us, we think different. We think that we can worship with any kind of people anywhere on the earth, no matter what they're doing. And God's going to accept because of me. Mm -mm. God does not accept incorrect worship done by the saints. He doesn't, he doesn't respond to it. He does not respond to it. And there is children in correct worship. And so therefore, he says, when his disciples were coming on the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, take heed. And we'll have the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So what? So this is the importance of not putting leaven, yeast in the bread. All that was done in the Old Testament. Not because God liked bread. It was to teach them. Do not put 
anything that you normally put in here, anything, new or old, put what I told you, water and flour. I don't need no yeast in there. And he knew, I'm going to punish you. He said, so get it out your cabinet. As soon as pass all week, you better get that junk, throw that junk in the garbage. And I don't know how you're going to buy it. you just be eating unleavened bread for the rest of the year. But you better not accidentally put it inside of what I have told you to do. It's, it's difficult for the man to simply just read the word of God and say, okay, that's it. Each of our mistakes have been because we just can't read the word of God and say, that's it. I'm running with that one. That's where it's at. Worry about what someone else says or what they're going to say or what they're going to do. And so therefore, the reason on themselves saying it is because we have no taken no bread. Now see, now that, that's, that's a logical thought. We didn't bring bread. It isn't damnation. They aren't worship of false God. It just, it's a logical thought. But it's an ignorant thought because Jesus does not care nor that his father about bread, period. Meats for the belly, belly for the meat. Both of them going to hell, he says. They're both destroyed by fire. There'll be no sunbeam bread left, no dirt. It's all going in hell. Because it's unnecessary. Including our thoughts, which are not of his. He said, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O oh, you little of faith, what reason you among yourselves because you have brought no bread? Do you not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves and the five thousand? How many baskets you took up? He said, you don't remember? I fed all the people. Not you. I fed them. You took up the fragments. Neither the seven loaves, the four thousand, how many baskets you took up? How does it know you do not understand that I spake it not to you? I want y'all to watch this now, saying Concerning bread. That you should be aware of the eleven of Pharisees. And the Pharisees. He still hasn't given the answer. He still hasn't given the answer. No answer has been given. He just says, how do you think I'm talking about bread? When I say 11 of Pharisees. Look at verse 12. This is you and me. This is you and me. They're either going to go to hell or they're going to make it to heaven. Based on verse 12. You and me are the same way. Either you're going to think you can worship like other people worship in false churches. You think you can appreciate that? You can read about it, read their books and accept their thoughts and their knowledge? You verse 12. Then understood they. Ha, he didn't say it. He didn't give the answer. How that he made them not beware of the leaven of bread. But the doctrine, he never says the word, of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. How did they figure it out? How could you get a subject like this wrong? And then figure it out. Because we are not paying attention. That's how. We got something else in our life that's distractive. I want to take a moment now. Perfect timing by the Lord. The Jean family. The family from St. Lucia. That worshiped the Lord God in the islands. Whose son and brother was slain innocent in his own apartment. By the young Dallas Police woman. Her problem is. She was in sin. Her training is all thrown out. Because she's a sinner. She could have been a saint. But what she was doing is sin. Sinful messages back and forth on the phone. Now this is how Satan going to get you and me the same way. And the Gene family and all saints, including Moses. Because when you put your hands on sin, you think God going to be with you? You think he going to make you stay balanced? If it costs you your salvation, that's your problem. Because you put your hands on you and what you want to do other than what God told you to do. She's not excluded. No matter if you're a Christian or not. That's why I isn't exposed what I did until it's found out. Because I already knew it's nasty anyway. So when I get on the wrong floor and go to the wrong place, you would think, well, I would ask questions. How am I going to stay balanced and ask questions? Because I'm a sinner practicing sin. So now the demon that's whispering in me gets into my mind and says, man, just bust a cap on this guy. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I've lived the life of sin. 
And any time you're committing sin, you fall and you should have been wide awake on what you were doing. All the tears and all the prayers of the righteous will not help you. Amen. And as the young man said, so boldly representing God well, you give your life to Christ. Amen. When you go to the wrong church, you're just in the same condition that you were when you made this error. Other saints pray. I pray, many of you pray that a life would be spared. Why? Because we're children of God. Give up more time to see. Someone called him a coward. That's a cursed soul that said that about the young man. See, a real man walks like Christ. The coward is the one who called him a coward. Whoever says it. See, because they're into skin color versus righteousness. Concerned about slavery versus freedom from sin. That's the difference. So this young man, God bless him, Brother Gene, bless his heart. The, the, the strength and wisdom is that they never seen it like that. It was like when Jesus came. So sinners curse and spit out their mouth negative statements. The rest are lost and confused just as in a bad shape as the one who said something. But less punishment inflicted because they just sit there bewildered. But that's what they said about Christ. And saints say the same thing when they hear something new. That they somehow overlooked and said the same thing. Never have we seen it done like this. Now who thought that? Is it Jesus? Father? Now wait a minute now. This is called New Testament. Which means it's spiritual information about the old. And brand new stuff is brought out. You can take your wife back now to divorce. That's brand new. Never have we seen it done like that. Do you think the Lord care about what you and me haven't seen? You really think he cares that we made a mistake and said something wrong? You really, th you really think the Lord cares that information has to stop being shared because we're not in agreement with it? No. See, that's how some churches function. If the leadership is not in agreement with something, it can't go. That's damnation with a sweet kiss goodbye to hell. Because that's how every denomination functions. Whether they got a deacon board, one pastor, pastor, six or seven co pastors it's irrelevant. Either what did the pastor say or what did the group say? What did the church say? We'll leave. Bye. That's what they're telling the nomination world. Does that rescue them? Nope. Because why? This is the rule. So when the law says rule, this is what it means. You rule with this. This is what you rule with. Every case comes before you, you rule with this. Okay, what does it say? What does it say to us to do? That's just how easy it is to make that. What does it say? And so therefore they figured out for themselves. Without him saying another word other than he just kept saying, that's the wrong answer. And they said, that's the wrong answer. Remember the law, you got the wrong answer. And then they clicked. How do they click? Because they removed the ignorance and say, he's talking about that doctrine. But he never said it. Now you see his anger when he said, how long will I be with you? How long? Why can't you understand? How do you not see it's not that what goes in the mouth, but what comes out the mouth? So, why is that? Because he says, I'm, you're not listening. So he says, be careful how you hear. He says, you're not listening to me. Got your mind on the physical things. Something you want to do. Something you'd like to see done. Something you want to see carried out. I have a fear. Oh no. Don't let this happen. I have a fear. And while you're doing that, it's like the woman is in motion of sin. When you get to a challenge, all of a sudden you come on a fork in the road. You were looking at your phone, not yet a fork, and you don't know to go left or right. And traffic is behind you. Horns are blowing. Take the wrong turn. You thought you could back up, but it's a narrow road. You back up, you go in the ditch, here comes the wrecker. That's life. Will you go to hell? You better believe it. Right in the middle of it. Why? Because the Lord said, you're not listening to me. You're not taking your walk serious. So Miriam becomes a leper. Aaron is held up. Camp can't move. Go outside. Moses makes a plea. He says, if her daddy would have spit in her face for disrespecting him, y'all wouldn't have said nothing to me. So get her out and sit down until seven days is up. That's what he meant. 
See, so why is that bothering them? Because they are troubled in the spirit that they can't move forward. Oh, yeah, it bothered. Why can't we move? Why not move more? Uh, Miriam, the whole story told everybody over and over again. Yeah, your business in the street. Well, you act like you want to be righteous, and your business will never make it to the street. Do what the Lord said. Everybody knows about Miriam to this day. Why is it like that? Because God has said it's how it's going to be at the jump. Everybody going to know. See, your mind can co contain more information than you think once you get out this body. And everybody will see all the understanding of all the crookedness. It says all I will see. So how is that possible? See, you're in this brain. You're limited. You get out there, whether you're going to hell or heaven, that mind fit in a rubber band. You're going to get everything. This guy was a crook. This one was a crook. Yeah. Because, see, you're trying to hold God in a box for your understanding. You can't. That's what it means to not be spiritual. So, I also got a couple of more thoughts here. The leaven, the yeast, the idea of the man only causes things to swell, but it cannot rescue. We're going to pick up where we left off last week. Acts chapter 2 and verse 5. This is the verse that we were going to go to. Now we made a statement about spinning off Acts 10, 1 through 2. All that this word devout is a word that applied to the souls of the men who were devoted to God regardless to if they were saved or lost. The same word is used. The exact same word is used. Here comes the problem with the word devoted or devout. The problem is all devout men don't obey to the end. You have a devout man that's lost. He's worshiping God not according to the Jews. He's worshiping God not according to to anyone other than himself. And he decides I'm going to praise God. I'm going to teach my family to pray to God. And I'm going to cause them to fear God. And I'm going to give a lot of money to a lot of people that have need poor. God looks at it and responds. Sends him an angel. I believe that qualifies for response. For the naysayers. And tells them that's something you ought to do. He didn't say none of what he was doing was wrong. He said that's something you ought to do. See, somebody look at that and say, well, that's not, no, no. That's something else he ought to do. That's what ought to mean. He needs to get baptized so he can become a Christian. Then his person can be received. Not just a response from God. Because God's not going to keep sending no spiritual angel to him. Because he's going to send a physical messenger, which is also an angel, like Peter. And you got to do what he say. You cannot heal. Without the teaching. God's not going to give an information. Without the teaching. That's the way it's going to be. So all of us are students. As we gather to hear the word of God. So Acts chapter 2 now verse 5. Is going to validate. All devout men don't get baptized. Amen. Now these men. They are devoted. And their worship is accepted. It's the day of Pentecost. They're doing exactly what they're supposed to. The problem is now a new thing is brought before them. Something that they have been paying attention to. And they're going to fly right over it. So it says in verse 5. And that were dwelling at Jerusalem. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, 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 now are we going to challenge the Holy Ghost? So he don't know what devote, devout and devoted mean. Right? He don't know how to talk. This is ridiculous. This is heresy. This is hypocrisy. Because we can see other things. We should be able to see this. So 12th verse. He says clearly. And they were all amazed. And were in doubt. Saying one to another. What meaneth this? Now that's one group. Trying to figure out what it means. There's another group though. That's different. Others mocking. Said. These men are full of new wine. These are two devoted groups. They're going to both give their gift. They're going to both love the Lord. But one group is going to be saved. And the other group is going to be cast away. Why? Because he says here. Others mock and say they're full of new wine. You got two holy groups here. Devout. 
This word devout does not mean that they are fake hypocrites. This is the real, this is the polished, finished product that comes to serve God and they're there for the right reasons. See, can't use the word, can't use the word devout, brethren, and not be there for the right reason. I'm sorry. See, this is called word study. We're supposed to know this. You cannot use the word devoted of a crook. No, you can't. No, you can't. The problem is you can be devoted, but when you hear something that's new, Amen. that you didn't know about, or you haven't been paying attention, now nah, they're full of new wine. And now you just have lost your stamp of devotion. You've come to a fork in the road, and you chose the wrong route. It happens all the time. They say, well, they can always get back. Do you know how difficult it is to get back? Remember, I told you, try to back up and go the other way, you might hit a ditch. You have to be extremely cautious now. Extremely cautious. And that's the key. And so now, the Bible does not record we must gather in a specific location as a congregation. Now that was the beginning of the lesson. So because unbeknownst to maybe you or I, here's something we've got to really adjust our lives to. And here's the key. Is that you and I must accept that God has no temple anymore. I said, why is it so hard to accept? I said, because throughout all the time, he had a place that my name is here. Brother Fritz did a masterful lesson. If you can get the lesson from Wednesday, I mean, man, powerful, powerful. The Jews are, were struggling with the same thing we see struggle with in the Gentile world. See, the Gentile world struggles with trying to mimic the Jew. So as the Jew hated that he had to give up his music, his, his priesthood, his one priest being the big guy. He struggles with the fact that the temple is useless now. Can't do anything. Let's let saints go on there and minister. He struggled. Well, the same way with the denomination world. They struggle with letting go of pastor, the doctors, the reverends. So you say, why should let go? Because they decided we're going to mimic the Jews. We're going to have instruments, tithing. We're going to give it spiritual applications. And we have one guy. See, in your mind, if you didn't know that, then you're a little bit off-centered on your investigative work to help the lost. The denomination world is trying to do nothing but mimic the Jews. The Muslims trying to mimic the Jews. All Tibetan priests trying to mimic the Jews. Try to be, because I'm trying to do, I'm going to look up and I say that, I'm trying to do what my forefathers, Adam and them said. What Adam and them told us. I'm trying to do that and, and God should accept it. Why? Why would I accept it? You're going to bring me something you want? No, you can't bring that to your own family. You have to bring what God said. And God is always right. Sometimes the family is wrong. They should have accepted what you brought. But with God, it doesn't work like that. And see, you try to reason and twist and argue and pull and push. You can't change it. You can't change it. You either accept it or it crushes it. The Lord said the rock either grinds you to powder or you trip over it. It means you err. And then you go back to the rock. Christ, and, he's, and you have to ask, teach me. Teach me what to do. And so therefore, in the mind of the Jew, it was hard to let go of the temple. Very difficult. It doesn't teach a specific number past two to have a church assembly. You know how awesomely challenging that is to people? Yeah. See, because I know for a fact, I know some faithful saints on the earth that they struggle with two or more being able to worship. They struggle. Because in their mind, it just says, you know, well, how, how can that be? How can just two people go? Well, see, but well, the Lord simply said it. And see, the mind gravitates back when you know you have to have a priest and the shoe bread and all. But we're not in a temple. See, the mind isn't accepting why it's pulling on that thought. Why is it like that? Because man cannot let go of the past. And man cannot accept what is reality today. This is his, this is his woe. He's always been that way. He cannot let go. And he cannot grab. That's why the Bible says, light 
is too powerful for darkness to comprehend. It cannot grab it. Guess who's the darkness? You and I. It's not something, some thought of idea. It is you. It is me. We're the darkness. Or either we're light. We either want to, either you're full of light. Lord said, because you're full of it. Either darkness or light. And there's no, no mixture. No, there's no mixture. It's either, if it's a mixture, it's darkness. If it's pure, it's light. If it's all darkness, it's darkness. There is no in between. There is no gray. That's why it says if you bring it to him and it's, it's middle ground, he says, I spit it out. It's out. I'm letting it go. And so, therefore, we have to accept this thought. And realize, well, who is the temple? The saint himself. But he cannot be the temple by himself. See, right. that's the problem. Only way he can be the temple by himself is if the word of God is in him and he's a saint and he has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord. But he can't be a group by himself. So then he prays to God by himself, as John did. On the first day of the week, he prays to God himself. So now let's validate that and see. Well, can we actually prove that? Look at 1 Corinthians, if you will. Chapter number 3. And we'll see here a collective mentality. 1 Corinthians 3. He talks about the entire congregation in and of itself. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse Number eight. Now he that planted and he that water are one. And every man shall receive his own for water caught his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry and you are God's building. So he said, so that, that's the collective group. Now, now that's the verse that shows I'm talking about all of the saints at Corinth. Verse 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another built thereupon. Or thereon. But let every man take heed how he built thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon his foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So now here's the individuals, how they're judged. So you can be a part of the work and still be lost. Because you're building something, you're adding something to the work. It has to be what is right. He says... Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So he's talking to the whole group. How does he know? Because he says you're God's husband, and not just one of you all together. So you're the temple of God, he says clearly, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Say so you don't know that? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple is you are. Now let's go to chapter 6. Now it's going to deal with the individual himself. Beginning at verse number 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of end. See, when you do something that brings you under power, that means you can't control it. It controls you, your desire. So the Lord says, if you lay down your life, you can take it back up again. I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you have your life. Life everlasting. That's what he's talking about. But if he say if you hold on to your life, you're going to lose it. Why? Because I'm going to take it at the judgment. So he said, well, you know, I'm doing this. I don't care how it affects anybody. Well, yeah, you will at the judgment. Because it will affect God. Judgment to you. Because they'll say, you should have laid your life down. he tell you, I told you it was affecting people. So now I'm going to take your life. See, so he keeps interchanging your physical life. Your spiritual walk on earth with life everlasting. That's what he's doing. He's interchanging. But I say, it's too hard to understand. That's because we're sinners. It's not a, a, sinners don't study. Sinners don't come to church regularly. Sinners don't believe what they study. One of the categories got to hit you. Because the law says, when people don't understand this, and they can understand other things, they're hypocrites. That's why he says it. So he says here clearly, uh, 
Meat's for the belly and belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication. But for the law. And the law for the body. Now here's the individual judgment. This is individual judgment. How do you know? Because only one person can fornicate and sin against himself. That's what he's going to say. So this is individual. This is how you are the temple by yourself. Without anyone else getting involved. Because you can commit fornication. Watch this. By yourself. That's why he's talking about this. He says. And God had raised up the Lord. And will raise him up by his own power. Know you not that your bodies. The, are the members of Christ. Shall I then take the members of Christ. And make them the members of a heart. And God forbid. So it says now each of us. Being a louder star. We are like a hand. A nose. An eye. Members of the body. So I take that nose. That eye. And make it a member of a heart. Attach it to harlotry. Which is to engage in immorality. What? No you not. That which is joint and harlot. Is one body. For two said he shall be one flesh. So when you join yourself to a harlotry. The thoughts of being with someone that you shouldn't be with. He says, just thinking about it in Matthew 5, he says, it will cost you a soul. He says clearly, because it's one person, it's like you've joined yourself in a marriage unlawfully. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So if you're joined to the Lord, you're one spirit. You're not one flesh. You're not, he says, what does the whole mean? You are one spirit with God. You are connected to his spirit. You can't be connected to God any other way but to his spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man does without the body, but he that committed sin, committed fornication, he says, against his own body. He committed sin. His sin is against his own body when he does this. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God. Now that's how I can be one. So for me to be able... To carry out what the Lord said in the verse that we talked about last week, which is going to go down, Matthew chapter 18. Amen. He says it requires two people. Because right. I can't do this one with myself only. If I'm locked like John in jail, because I do have the Holy Spirit in me, I can work. Now, the key is, is now, what if I can't get the Lord's Supper? Mm. I can't give. Well, I give the money to his wife. I say, come on, son. Well, you can hold the money. Man, please. He said, give it on the first day of the week. He said, hold it. So, how would I do that? I don't have to. Why? Because I can worship God by myself. And he will accept me because I am locked up in prison. Amen. How are you baptized, brother? You got to get baptized. You got to get baptized. So that lost soul, that's somebody else. He got to still get baptized. See, see, what we want God to change, he's not changing. See what, what about if he locked him in jail and they won't let him get baptized? There's no such thing as that. If I said, well, what if it's, you, you said he could possibly be locked up where he couldn't get to worship? He doesn't have to. See how easy that is to answer? Because he can worship God as John. But you cannot be saved without getting baptized. There's no such existence. There's no such alteration. Because it has not been instructed. It has not been shown. And it has not shown it is inferred necessary that he not be dipped in water. That's a lie. Even in the desert, which is hard to find water, man found water. See, that, see God's not going to argue about that. And neither should you. Let them die in hell lost. They're going to go to hell anyway. See, that's something we cannot accept. You cannot accept. And that's why I would not like Christ. Because when trouble hits and something new hits, you can't accept it because I'm bigger than God. Till I accept this is not happening in the saints' lives. They cannot, it cannot exist. You don't get to do that, man. We're going to all die one day. You can't accept that some people are going to die lost. Just can't accept that, that they're not going to make it to heaven. Just can't accept it. And then therefore now I can't be around them physically. Just can't be around them physically. I can't accept their person. I can't greet them and say hello. Like the Lord said. Greet them like your friends. Can't just I can't because, hey man, they're not going to heaven. <laughs> so where are we at? Fork in the road. Just can't do what God said. 
just can't do what he said. He says, greet them like they're your friends. Love them like you love everybody. Can't do that one. I can't do it, Lord. Then you're not getting in either. Because see, you, you, you keep hitting these forks. There's forks everywhere you turn. You have to make it. He's never going to just give you one. He's going to always let the devil bring in his role. Lay my role right by God. And you got to make the call. See, the problem with a fork in the road in the physical world, you really don't know which way to go. You got a GPS you do. God is your guide. And you suppose accept it, brother. Now, what's unacceptable is not letting God be the guide. That can't be halted. So he says in Matthew 18, he's explicitly talking about what the church looks like. This is about the New Testament church. It's given to them to do right there, but this is about the New Testament church. Because he's laying his testament. And what the Bible says is when a person dies, the testament becomes a fault. But Jesus says things after he's dead. Does he have to die again? No. See, he's taking that one literal too. That one's taking literal. Jesus says all oh, manner of new things through the disciples. He's already risen. He's no longer dead. Does he have to die again to make that work? See, taking it literal. He has to die for it. When the Lord speaks, they're supposed to put in action what he says. Because he doesn't say anything in these Gospels that contradict the law. When he fulfills it, he starts saying, you can take your wife back. That's when he tells them that. Through Paul, first man said, you can take her back. Now I have to do more. Whereas under the law, you couldn't. Now does he have to die again to make that? Mm -mm. See, because his testament is his spirit, brethren. It isn't just the words he's going to say. His spirit in the blood. We'll talk about that tonight. His spirit. If it's in you, the New Testament is in you. But it don't mean you're going to be saved because we can cast it out. Because we don't like how it contradicts what we thought or what we think, how we think it should be. And it contradicts us. And therefore we spit it out. So I don't like his flavor. He says in Matthew 18, he talks about error. Verse 15, more of thy brother shall trespass against thee. Verse 15, go and tell him it's far between thee and him alone. He trespassed against you. You. Not someone else. He trespassed against you. First verse tells us where this at. Individual problem. You. He, he did something to you. He says, if he should hear thee, then I was gain not brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more. This is from the Old Testament also. And the mark of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. This is forever. This will be God's process forever. Two or three witnesses. Someone tells you something, you don't even have to address it. So, okay, well, you know, man, I, I, you got does anybody else know this? Because I can go all the way to three witnesses. Because it may be fusion. Then everybody got to come back. Well, that's not, that's not what happened. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to take it. You at least two or three witnesses because it might be foolishness. He took the house of court. Did he say that? The only person I told? How many people in the house of court? See, somebody think about that. How many was that? Was it two or more? That's still two or more. Some people lie in one house. So it's a, no, you can't go house of court. He took on one. You can't say that. You don't know how many people commented in the letter. You don't know what happened. So the idea is this is Paul's theme to two or more. We have to understand that and accept it to recognize. And so he says here, that every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear thee, tell him to the church. Now who is that? The call dot. Well, they know what that is. They are assembly too. The system has to be processed. And this is how it should be. Moses did that. They always did. Bring them to the assembly. Bring them before the assembly. The people may judge. This guy's done this. They have done that. And we have to understand this is the system. But he's saying this system also is going to have an effect for the New Testament church. Why? Because the New Testament church does not gather in Jerusalem. That's what he told a woman at the well. He says, neglect to hear the church. If he does that, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Now those times apply to them because why? He's not just teaching us. He's not just teaching them. He's teaching all. So we don't, we don't have a problem. We don't have saints per se collecting taxes for the U.S. government and giving up because we're not separate like that. 
You have to understand it. So this applies to them too. Truly I say to you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth. What is that talking about? If you bind the sins of a person on earth, they stay bound. Who has that authority? The one with the keys. That's talking about a chain wrapped around you and a key locked on you where you cannot get out. He says clearly, it'll be bound in heaven. And whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why? Because when he comes before the judgment, they were already relieved of him on earth because he obeyed. He had the shackles removed. You can't have a discussion in heaven. You can't reason your way into God. Either you come up there with chains or you come up there loose. So he says, verse 18, truly I say unto you this. This is the key. Truly, he says, it's going to happen. Verse 19, again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, this, this, is, this is still the same context. This is how he's validating it. Because he say, if two of you will do it, it's done. It isn't about going anywhere else. He say, it is done. That's why I say, take two or more. He says, man, establish, man, you know, you refuse to do this. You refuse to change. You refuse to stop teaching, what have you. He says, as touch anything that they shall ask, it shall be done but then with my father, but then this is also the concept of the church. When the saints teach the truth, when we teach the truth, the church has to be in agreement. And it's and it's it is what it is. It doesn't matter who gets offended or who's angry, who doesn't understand it, who can't accept it, who can't breathe it in. It's the key is as Law Basil was told, y'all poor, wretched, naked, and blind. And he says, This is what you gotta do to change this. That letter is written. And somebody's got to lead them in that to get out of their mindset. And so what he says here clearly, he expresses, if you touch that stuff, so you touch the thought of this person's sins being removed. You're praying for them. They're trying to get them in line. They're trying to help them to see the word. Or if the church is teaching, it doesn't matter. Now it goes to how many. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's still a gathering at that time. Whether it's a temporary gathering, whether it's a permanent gathering, whether they're in jail, it doesn't matter. Two jail mates get together and they are saints and can't get out and don't get out and they pray or something anything. That's what he's saying. Together. Amen. See, that's what's wrong with us, brethren. Sometimes we're not spiritual. When we hit that certain forks, it gets us in trouble. Because we may not be as spiritual as we thought. Well, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not damnation. Just accept it and be spiritual. So he says, why? The key word there, brother, in verse 20. For or because. That's what the word deals with. Where two or three are gathered together in my name. Key word. Got to be saints. Got to have his character. And you have to have his authority. That's the key. The character is his image. How he lives. How do you worship God? How do you present yourself to the Lord? What do you do when you gather for words? What do you say? And in addition to that, are you authorized to unshackle or to bind him in these sins? Or her? He says, there am I in the midst of them. He says, so this is how it can happen. Because he knows we don't have a, a specific gathered place. We don't have a specific anymore. Two or more. And you can't stop this. You can't recreate this. You can't discredit this. And it will have more power in of itself than a million people gathered for the wrong reason. It's irrelevant. And this is the mindset of spirituality to understand. It transcends the physical man. If we can understand that and accept it, then we can receive in our heart. This is how the answer is given. That will God respond to worship done correctly by the unsaved? Because he responds to worship done correctly by the righteous. The system is still going to be the same. When a person is reaching for God, he is reaching the worship God as God is, And God responds and comes in. When the saints gather though, the difference is when the saints gather two or more. They can unshackle the sins of a person. Or they can lock the sins on them and walk over the keys. You can't unlock. This is a binding you cannot break. 
It's not like the guy in the temple with the feather, I mean, in the tomb with the feathers. He kept breaking. Mm -mm, you won't break these. See, these are spiritual. And God showed that in the analogy. The guy that howled and cut himself. He could break anything a man made. He could break. It, it, see, in your, in, your, in your mind, in my mind, it's really hard for us to believe a man can break chains. And it isn't because the chains are made back then. They couldn't make good chains. Mm -hmm. God allowed the devil to give this guy such a strength. When he pulled on those chains, they popped. You know, I mean, do you, do you know how hard for, it is for people to accept that a man can break a chain? You know how many people don't believe that story? Mm. See, that's why hell has to be administered to the soul. Because of the disrespect for God. Some people don't believe a donkey talked an ass, as the Bible said. Spoke as, as intelligent as a man. They don't believe the snake talked. That's why they got to go to hell. Because you're disrespectful to the Lord. Not worthy of Him. You don't deserve. He'll let you eat all the food you want. Buy all the things you desire. But that's going to be the end to your beginning. And you will die lost. Because you will not disrespect the Most High God. He will keep His word. How do you get out of this debt that you owe the Lord. And be rescued from eternal damnation. Well you got to get baptized. So I've been baptized already. Acts 19, 1 through 5. That stone is already unturned and looked under. If you've been taught incorrect, you cannot be baptized right. You've been taught about people using instruments and women teaching and churches that contradict what God said, worshiping when they want, telling what they want, picking in their day to give the Lord's Supper. Okay, you were dipped in water, but you're not safe yet. Because that's not God's people. He did not send them to you. The devil sent that person. And they're not of the Lord God Almighty. So therefore you have to accept in your heart. I'm not safe. That doesn't do anything for the saints. It only helps you. It doesn't do anything for God. It only helps you. God wants it to be at mess of your soul. But he's not going to force a person. But at the end of the judgment. He will say. You didn't do well. You're not a faithful servant. Depart from me your work of iniquity. See all this time on life we get. Medicines and things that keep us alive. There are purpose in that. To give us more time. But time is running out. Some of us are on the edge of destruction and don't accept it. How do you change? You recognize I'm not safe. As in Acts 19, 1 through 5. I've been baptized, I've been told the message, but I'm not safe yet. I don't know how the Holy Ghost is minister. I don't know how he functions in my heart, in my life. He's not with me. What's the adjustment? I still believe Jesus died, was buried on the third day, rose again. Amen. They believe that too. Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be down. Mark 16 and 16. Then why are they not saved? Because the teacher is not from God. God doesn't work with him. He doesn't witness with that spirit. You can't tell the Holy Ghost who to pick. Do you live in everybody's house? Do you? Are you married to everybody? You know, somebody I can't make you make somebody else your spouse. You know who your spouse. The Holy Spirit doesn't witness with them. So in Acts chapter 2, they are there at church. They've done no sin. To that point, they've done no sin. Verse 37, they ask, men and brothers, what shall we do? It says, change and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the sins will be removed. And he says you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Someone thinking they're going to get the Holy Ghost any other way is a waste of time. Then why don't they have them in Acts 19? What did those people do so often? They have John's baptism and they've been told my sins are removed. Mm -mm. My Holy Spirit can't function right. Can't say it right. Because I don't believe it. The mouth tells on us. We speak a different language. A language different than the language of the church. The people of God. And so therefore... It says, the promise is unto you and to your children, all that are far, even as many as the Lord our God shall come. And many of the words he testified, he encouraged them. Save yourselves from this crooked or preferred generation. Then they, not the others, then they, those devoted men, those devoted men, then they that gladly received his word were baptized the same day. And about 3,000 souls were added unto them. Why didn't they wait? Because you could die tomorrow. You could die this evening. He says, they, only that group. What did they do after that? And they continued steadfastly in their own doctrine. No, in the apostles' doctrine. 
in the fellowship to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. First John chapter 1. The breaking of bread, a different meal. Not the Passover meal anymore. And prayers. Prayers are different now. Prayers are said in understanding of there's only one nation and it's not the Jews and it's definitely not the Gentiles. Acts 2, 47. And the Lord added to the church daily that such should be saved. In Acts chapter 8, the eunuch is in the same boat. But he's a Gentile. Traveling from Ethiopia, worshiping as a Jew. He thinks he's safe. He can't understand Isaiah. 53rd chapter around that area. Well, we have marked as a 53rd chapter. Philip teaches him, and now all of a sudden we got information about water, Jesus Christ. None of those are even in Isaiah 53. Because Philip has the New Testament that goes with that to express what that means. Just because the nomination heard us talking about Isaiah 53 don't mean they're a part of what Isaiah 53 is. That's simply trying to mimic. So you have a group now that mimics Gentiles, Jews, and the church of Christ. Trying to act like, and it's like a three ring circus from hell. It is so confusing. When they come out of there, they don't even know what they just saw. Because it's confusion. Law, idolatry, and Christianity and mystery. There is no such existence. That's every denominational church on the earth. Has all three components. That's because they give a little of all. Just a little bit of all. Just enough to kill you. Just enough to kill you. But you can be free from that. Ha! Huh. Because when the eunuch heard, he saw the water. See, here's water. But the enemy to be baptized. He said, if you believe in all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He starts the chair and then he baptizes him. And he's safe. Safe from damnation. Safe from sin. If you believe that and don't understand it, that's why he rejoiced. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether well, Jew, Gentile, bond, or friend have all been made to drink into one spirit. That, does, that statement doesn't even make sense unless you look at it spiritually. You drink in the spirit like you drink in water. And you can't do it by prayer and hope. And the wrong teacher can't even get you to the door of Christ. Only the saints of God can lead you there. You can accept that. It's whether you know it's the key. How did you bring up jail? Whether you're bond or free. Whether you're in jail or not. Jew or Gentile. See that's the power. Without the concept of you being able to worship God by yourself. Without all the other components, the five actions we do cannot exist without Christ saying, you're the temple and I'm in you. It'd be no, you just go to hell out the baptism. You go straight to hell. Because I'm telling you, that's some places you definitely not, they're not going to let you go in there. You don't even go in there. You, know, you think about American jail, they got some jail, you're not going in there. And that's it. You couldn't go every further away. They're not letting you in. And God not going to let you in. Because he said, I don't need that. You go where I told you go. Go out of people who need to hear. Go gather with them and teach them. Come in no jail until you go there. And you're not getting in that incarcerated area that's secret. So how am I going to be saved? How they get baptized? We know one thing. He is and he's in and he can serve God. Just as John on the Isle of Patmos. You think, they, you think well then why didn't they let somebody in there with John? See that's what's wrong with us. Well, somebody want to get in. Well why didn't they let somebody in there with John? He said I. Not us. I. Was in the spirit of the Lord. On the Lord's day. Patmos. I'm in jail. I can still serve. Because he's in me. And I'm an individual. If I want to get something done. I need to get something done. When two of us gather. Two of us gather. Hey. Both in the Lord. We can have the worship. And when we touch this. He's going to say. Yeah. If it's my will. Amen. Can't touch it brethren. That spirit. The other stuff we talk about. Is physical. That's the difference. Thank God for it. So what do we do? Why is it so important to get baptized? First Corinthians 12, 13, I mean first Peter chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 21, beginning. It says, For the life figure, first Peter 3, 21. Why is it even baptism is also now save us comparing to Noah and the ark? As they were saved in a boat, he says, Baptism saves us. As they were saved in the boat, it says baptism saves us. Not the putting away the fifth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God. We've responded to God's call right. He says, this is what does it. Not the putting away the fifth of the flesh. It's not the water. Everybody knows that. Water can't do anything. We know that. 
He says, where is this Christ at? By His resurrection in heaven, at the right hand of God, angels, thorns, and powers are subject to Him. If you believe that, you can accept that. You can be saved right now. You can be baptized, take you to the water, and you will be rescued by the hands of God and not by the hands of man. The Lord said as a warning, Revelation 2.10. The old devil should cast some of you into prison. You have tribulation ten days. He says, but be thou faithful unto death. See, the everlasting life. The devil can bring some stuff so hard in your life, you will say, I give. Take God from me. I want to be free. He'll let you right out of jail. Go, my child, and you'll go right into hell. See, the reality is, there's only one group with the truth, the saints. And when the saints teach, we have to let go of what we thought was right. And be baptized. I and mean, if we are saints, we have to let go of what we thought was right. And change and adjust to the Lord himself. If you can believe that, you can be baptized not stay standing. But we sit down, hold your hand up if you're too weak to stand. And let us recognize then you can be baptized and you'll be complete. And then now you'll be accepted. Other than your appropriate words of God, the person must be accepted to get into heaven. See, I have to understand something. If an individual does all the actions right, then he should be automatically saying, mm -hmm. see, your person has to be accepted. You have to be accepted. That can only be done if you're baptized into the kingdom of God and not just into water. If you hear your member of the church, you've gotten off track. It's time to make an about face. Come back to the law before it's too late. Come now together, we sing Elvis' invitation. Lovely Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching. Watching for 